aging face that this world has forgotten. What's up guys? Now, before going into the course of the Wi-Fi battle of the day, I'm just going to tell you guys that I'm actually started a Discord group called The Battle, which clearly is an invitation that I want you guys to join it. It's going to be linked down below. And it's basically it's a way of you to actually, of course, battle me, but also battle other players in, of course, the Pokemon community. The purpose of this channel or Discord group is basically to gather people that want to battle by Smoke and Tears. So feel free to join us and, well, I'll see you guys there. Ooh, what's up guys, of course, welcome back to another never used alpha Wi-Fi battle. And before going in, as you guys can see my opponent's team here, we have two Pokemons from the RU. But I decided to go with it anyway, mainly because his overall team felt uh, not overly powerful. And besides those two, it would be Celestial and Cresselia, which are scary Pokemons indeed. But other than that, Adam here, which also actually are from that group, as I was talking about earlier, in, of course, in the video. Um... He has Vicavolt, Alolan Executor, and Persune, and Wishiwashi. So overall, Brazilian and Celestial are threats, mainly because Celestial can actually have the Nasty Blood pretty much eradicate my team, since it actually naturally outspeeds it, if of course my Scarfed Medishan, which are part of my team, is not able to deal with it properly. But other than that, not the biggest type of threat, Cresselia could live forever, but that's what it does, it doesn't die. It is not a physical threat by any means of the imagination, but it doesn't die, and that's always an issue. Uh, I myself is using for Assault of Esclolista, Bulky, of course, Torterra with Stealth Rocks and Leftovers. Kamala! Oh, sorry. <laughs> Had to join, not gonna re record that. Kamala here with um, um, basically the standard set Return, Earthquake, and of course, Wish and Rapid Spin. Uh, my niche here, main niche is of course Red Eyes with C Focus Blast. And just a mainly Red Eye Sweeper, it is not that impressive. I really want to have something not as conventional. Scarf Medisham, and of course, Specs Busted John Mega. So, yeah, from the get to go, I think Clawless is overall a better Pokemon to deal with. Just see what he wants to do. So, yeah, let's go into the match. So, yeah, as I said here, I'm gonna lead off with, of course, Kessler, the Clawlister, as he'll lead off with Vicavolt or A Drive, ew. So, yeah, not the best kind of lead here. Definitely didn't feel that it would be in my favor staying in, so I'm gonna switch out and go direct for Rufu, mainly because, well, I'm, I'm somewhat specially defensive, but the bug bus here will do uh, definitely enough to tell me that that's not gonna help. <laughs> I mean, come on, I'm max HP basically in a lot of defense, but that's a 2 hit KO, that's pretty darn disgusting, so I need to switch out and bring, of course, my Caseify, being, of course, my John Mega. As my opponent will go to touchdown, which is the Alolan Executor. And this is a matchup that's just gonna end one way if it stays in, and that is, uh, well, John Mega doing John Mega stuff and gonna KO the Alolan tree as uh, Plumeria is gonna come in, which of course is the monster that is, well, what we call it, Celestial. And I didn't necessarily know what to do here, so I decided to, well, sack Rufu basically. As he takes the opportunity to actually go for nasty plot, so you know we, we're not we're not in a good spot. We're definitely kind of screwed here if he well attacks freely. Uh, I really have no switch in here. Everything that comes in dies, so it basically means that Rufu need to go down, and I'm gonna actually rely on everything that I have that my Medisham here can, in some way or fashion, kind of kind of go for some headbutt without he predicting anything and just let it happen. So basically, don't switch out. Yeah, he does this with Shell, which is great. We're gonna KO this mother if it is sent Sash. Yeah, damn it. That's um, that's not frustrating. As uh, so Sludge, we're of course gonna clean the Medisham up. And you know, basically, here I felt Clolister might be able to take a hit. It is a Soul Visitor after all, but whether or not if it takes it, yeah, debatable. We're gonna risk it at least because at this point, I really have no other shot. Everything else is one KO guarantee. As he actually switches out physically, uh, do not want to gamble it and goes to Teacher. Which, of course, gather his school kids and becomes the monster that is the Wishy-Washy. As the Dark Pulse here will do just about nope. Should do just about nope. Because Wishy-Washy is definitely a very, very defensive Pokemon, even though it loses its form. Sadly, though, it doesn't carry, of course, a berry that will recover 50% of his HP. It is unfortunate, because it does mean that he get a fully attack hit on me twice. Uh, luckily, it doesn't do all that much. It still does a lot of damage, because that it's unstabbed, but yeah. I mean, I can still pressure him and just keep on spamming Dark Pulses. 
as he goes for U-turn, so definitely a good piloting move on his side, as U-turn actually did just about the same as Earthquake, really. And uh, now, of course, Giovanni, the monster's cat, is gonna come in, and, um, yeah, I could risk with an Oras Vib, but I really don't want to try to take that damage, as I'm just gonna bring Jagd Ho, uh, which, of course, is um, going to hopefully bait him, I'll go for Stealth Frogs. I actually pre was predicting here that it's very likely he will try to switch into Celestial predicting my Stealth Frogs. I'm just gonna go for the Earthquake anyway. Um, it doesn't expect a fur code either, so I'll get a decent chunk of damage from the Persian too. As he switches out, he goes to the mirror, so we get that predictions right, and that is really, really, really important. Mainly because, of course, that, that means that we are not swept by Celestial this battle. And, uh, yeah, getting up rocks would have been a big priority in this game had I thought about it. I didn't do that, and we became kind of a nasty spot, so kind of glad that Jug Tower take it out, and uh, well, we can keep on battling for probably a, a longer time is what I'm trying to say. As uh, uh, here is of course the Griselia. I decided to go actually for a Stealth Frog as Ice Wind, which was something I didn't predict. I was predicting possibly Ice Beam uh, would survive both of them bulky after all, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm in a decent spot is what I'm trying to say. Now, I, I don't have a lot of use for Jack Tower at all uh, on my Torterra. It doesn't do all that much, but it's gonna try to preserve it anyway as a de possible Death Fodder and bring Kestler here predicting another Icy Wind as it sadly goes for Psychic. And I say sadly because I would have got a decent Woodhammer on this. Um, now, he will switch out and go to the Teacher Bag and basically sacking it. That's a very, very strong play from Adam. Consider, of course, that it means that he can bring anything he wants freely. And they still have Pokemons that could very, very well come in freely and do a massive amount of damage. One of those is definitely the Persian, but of course with uh, Snarl or Dark Pulse could very well take me out. So with that in mind, I'm gonna decide to switch out. I was hoping to go for Snarl, it doesn't necessarily matter. And basically sag my Jack Tower as uh, he shows me the Dark Pulse. And that's uh, both good and a bad thing because it means it's definitely an offensive variant of the Alolan Persian, which doesn't necessarily have all that, you know, all that good special attack, it definitely barely has one, I do believe it's like 70 or 60, but at the same time, there are only so many mods can deal with it properly, one of those that I have left is, of course, Red Eyes, which possibly would, of course, see Focus Blast can take it out, if it falls for it, so I'm gonna send in Thane, which, of course, is the monster's Red Eyes, as he's actually gonna showcase Power Gem, and it will actually do a decent chunk, consider, of course, what I am, which, of course, is a very, very good specially defensive monster, it is Red Eyes, so very, very surprising it did so much, as of course the C Focus Blast is gonna do what C Focus Blast does, and that is the all-out pummel, and we're gonna annihilate, of course, the lone person. Now I'm very sure a rather, a, you know, a regular Focus Blast would have taken it out, but I wouldn't, of course, missed the opportunity, of course, showcasing this, because of course both Cresselia and of course uh, uh, Vikavolt does resist this as all hell. So I'll think and I figure that this was my better option. As um, now we get to the slow part of the battle. What I mean by that is that I need to get my Alolan, no, not my Young Mega, in freely uh, without, of course, any kind of necessary damage onto me. We see Thunder Wave 2, that kind of just scares me all that much more, mainly because, of course, um, I can't outspeed anything in his team if I'm Thunder Wave with my Young Mega. So my best bet overall is kind of sack Red Eyes, and that's a kind of complicated thing to do, mainly because Cresselia on its own aren't necessarily that physically scary, and now that Thunder Wave is active, I'm just gonna die that much more slower. So the only Pokemon that possibly could damage me is, of course, the Vikavolt, and basically this is kind of a stalemate. Uh, now, Blizzard does a fair amount of damage, and I actually consider it carry an Ice Beam here from here on out, but Blizzard, yeah, it actually does something, and I'm kinda happy with that, but as you guys can see, due to Moonlight, Chris is not gonna go anywhere, it's definitely winning the matchup overall, though by, of course, extension, as I just go for regular Thunderbolt, just get some ship damage, you guys see, it doesn't do necessarily anything, because it shouldn't, and that sucks. But yeah, like I said, uh, we're on the same way, luckily my opponent do decide to switch to, of course, the Vikavolt or A-Drive U, and um, yeah, I mean, I'll take it, like, anything that can speed this up is just great. So Thunderbolt doesn't necessarily do all that much for Vikavolt either, as he will actually showcase his own Simo, you know, of course, the Gigavolt Havoc. And, uh, yeah, that, that's that's gonna kill, that's no way in hell we're gonna take that. Though it do look lovely with Vikavolt, Vikavolt looks like a super champ with this move in mind. And, yeah, the power, the power of the Gigavolt Havoc, and poor, poor Red Eyes. Though it's only fair that my C user dies to another C user, so hey, there we go. 
So yeah, based on here and out, I'm gonna try to get some more damage on it, and the best way of doing so is bringing in Kessler. I know I can possibly outspeed it, since I am rather speedy, and we get the Dark Horse Dark Pulse here. The reason I decided to go for Dark Pulse or anything like that in, instead of Skull was because I really thought that I would KO even either way, which I still didn't do, but the good part here is that we only have John Mega left, and trust me, Specs Bug Buzz do annihilate them both. It would be very likely that Bugbus would have KO'd the Vicar Vault anyway, but I didn't want to gamble it because in the end of the day, uh, I don't want to deal with, of course, Griselia and being with a lower HP, of course, uh, Claw Lister. So, Adam, thank you, of course, so much for this battle. It was definitely intense. While I did get rather slow at the end, that's kind of what happens when we both have defensive Pokemon as our offensive leads at the end. So it's a very, very fierce, slow pot, but Griselia definitely one of those that just solves that. So anyway, of course, thank you everybody for watching, and I'll see you next video. Take care.